I'll share. Okay. Mine was really good. That was super good. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. It's uh, 1 03 p.m. This is Ian Doyle serving as uh, Oregon Board of Pharmacy President. Uh, calling the meeting back to lunch or back after lunch. Uh, we will now take public comment. Uh, please note that the board will not deliberate items such as formal requests, issues currently under investigation, requests pending before the board, or currently proposed rules during public comment. Person has three minutes to speak. Uh, we will begin with our first uh, speaker. Is there a preferred area? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Ryan Mayo. Yeah. Microphone is the disc. Hello, my name is Brian Mayo. I'm the executive director of the Oregon State Pharmacy Association. I want to thank you guys for having a great meeting so far. It's been a lot of great conversations and dialogue, and we appreciate the uh, the work that you guys are doing. Um, it's very encouraging to see the uh, the work that you're putting in right now and what the uh, uh, the outcomes hopefully will be over the next several years as you guys put together the strategic plan. I wanted to address a couple of things. First of all, uh, board member Hemmings, one of the, uh, the things that you mentioned earlier um, regarding the uh, the rules and the increase in the uh, the number of uh, cases. One of the biggest problems that we hear is that pharmacies are having questions about a rule and getting a response from the board staff saying that they cannot provide legal advice and that you must contact an attorney. This thing used to happen in the past. So what my understanding is, is that a couple of years ago, there was a change and legal advice was given to the staff that they cannot provide legal advice. So. What the pharmacists are looking for is a understanding of the rules that are being put into motion that you guys are uh, putting forth, not looking at what the statute is and in, in the laws. With the with each meeting and the hundreds of pages of pages that are that people have to have to go through, there are questions that come out that pharmacists need to know. Uh, even though. The number of pharmacies are closing. The caseload continues to increase. One of the ways to solve this is that you have budgeted to have a compliance officer put into the uh, on staff to add to that. If you go back to answering the questions and addressing those questions that are happening, the number of cases will go ahead and go down. In my opinion. What they're doing is they're being proactive. They're reaching out to the board and they're looking for an answer on the rules, not the uh, not the laws. I have one pharmacist who received the uh, the response that um, you need to we can't answer it. You need to seek legal advice. So we went to two attorneys and cut two different answers. They're coming to you and they want to get the answers and you need to be able to help them with that. That's going to help with patient safety and reduce your caseload. <clears throat> For Joanna Tucker Davis. You know about our request to repeal the rule that pharmacists must not diagnose. I'm sure you've seen the letter they sent to the governor to Kodak. OSPA has hired legal counsel to provide the Board of Pharmacy members with a different legal perspective. We feel that you have been providing misinformation by some of your legal advice, and we're going to support the board members with a different opinion. Or ask in the repeal letter is to simply delete the word diagnose. We're spending a lot of time and money to do this. The way that you made the change was unethical. You made the change during the August meeting, which had the board of packet with over 300 pages. The section of rules that was portrayed as being copied and pasted from one section of rules to the next was for clarity. There was no red line edits or discussion about making the change. 
This process puts a negative light on the Board of Pharmacy and definitely appears to be intentional. I've gone back and taken a look at the gray box for clarification and it says the need for the rule, it creates a new division 115 for pharmacists, relocates, reorganizes, and amends existing pharmacists rules from division 009, 020, and 041. After the board permanently adopts and publishes division 115, repeals division 019 on the effective date of division 115. There's no explanation about why it needs to be this must not diagnose. My hope for the Board of Pharmacy is that you listen to the pharmacists and repeal the diagnose rule at the December meeting. I want to work together with the board members and the board staff. Jen is a past OSPA president. Several of you are OSPA members, and we have that strong foundation already in place. We want to collaborate and work with you together. Jamal, we're excited to have you on board and look forward to working with you. And we want to have a clean slate. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Our next speaker is Dan Kennedy from OSPA. Thank you. I appreciate hiding behind a lectern, so I, <laughs> I like this. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Kennedy. I'm the president of the Oregon State Pharmacy Association. Um, a couple of reasons that Brian and I decided to come to Newport and spend a couple days with you. Uh, one was to show support for Jamal, and we're here to support you, Jamal. Um, and we're, we're also here to uh, just engage with the strategic plan of the board, because if there's one thing that we found out uh, in the recent meeting in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, was they had called, there was an NABP and AACP meeting, uh, American so Academy of Colleges of Pharmacy. Um, it was a call for collaboration between the state pharmacy associations, the colleges of pharmacy, and the boards of pharmacy. Um, it's no surprise to you uh, that the uh, condition of community retail pharmacy right now, as I'd say, is critical. Um, they're, they are facing problems that are uh, really uh, unprecedented within the pharmacy uh, community. Some of these problems have been percolating for the last 30 years, and we knew that things were getting bad, but I think things have reached a boiling point now. So really what I'm doing is calling for better collaboration between the state pharmacy associations, the colleges of pharmacies, and the board of pharmacy. Uh, colleges of pharmacy are having trouble getting recruits, which translates into uh, an issue with graduating pharmacists and having enough pharmacists to do the, do the job. And the board of pharmacy has the... Uh, the responsibility to uh, not just the profession, but the patients. And really, I think our collaboration really uh, resounds with our patients. Uh, ultimately, we can change a lot of different things, but it's the patient that really matters and the safety of the patient. So I just hope that you keep that in mind um, and just realize uh, that we're here to collaborate with you. We're not here as uh, adversaries. We're here to collaborate for the best, uh, the best possible outcome, both for pharmacy as a profession and for patients as recipients of that profession. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much to our uh, presenters. Uh, that concludes our um, public comment uh, period as uh, no other persons had uh, signed up. And we will move on now uh, back to, um, yes. uh, to facilitator Pandy to guide us in the next exercise. Right, we're gonna continue. Uh, we were wrapping up our operations. We have communications as the last subject area. So if we're that done. number. Huh? We're done with operations. I'm sorry, is that what you just said? Uh, I think we're done with operations, unless there are any other comments from um, on the board or staff on the community, on the operations. 
topic. I think we had pretty much wrapped up on this, but good question. Not seeing any hands. Once going twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just so you know, we're going to wrap up communication and we're going to move into the DEI, so then we're going to need those slides. Sounds good. Ashley's part of the show. I'm going to kick back. <laughs> Sorry, give me just a second. Well, how was that lunch? Oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The asparagus was really good. Mm -hmm. I did take a picture of it and then grab it from another place. Sure, grabbed it. There's a kind of support member, Chen. They have it for starting um, after the member that you're excused asked. Um, Bird would be able to listen to all. Um, but I don't know if there's now an opportunity when the staff does a cohesive review and brings it back to us of that member to make um just asking that all because there is if we haven't had that happen on schedule. No. So we have consensus on no. <laughs> um, well, this is the facilitator, Andy. Um, I would hope this is you know, subject to the timeline of. Uh, that the draft, whatever draft is being brought forth in February would be reviewable in advance of the meeting. So you, know, you come in with a marked up copy and kinds of suggestions. So I think that would be absolutely appropriate for any missing board member to be able to be informed and, and kind of merge into the process without being too disoriented or being as informed as we can make. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense to me. I'm just I would hope that if um which Harbor is listening, he hears those comments. Uh, it was the board member of government. I mean, but if you me. think about it, it's like if, if we had a change in and how we were something different, then we would have that opportunity. She should have that opportunity as well. I mean that just because she wasn't here doesn't mean that she doesn't have a say when we go to read read, read that and before we I mean that's that's what we do all the time when people are gone you know like oh wait a minute I did that I have my say on that so not as much as I want to say no <laughs> <laughs> not really though I love her I love her and I think that we're missing that perspective on her and I think that she will have um, some comments to make about it so I'm All right, one more second, almost there. I, they weren't labeled, it just said image, and I must have deleted it, but I found it.
Um, maybe the Jets. Hurry, <laughs> <Sorry>, Rachel. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> oh my <I> god. <laughs> All right. I mean, we just share it with the public, and we're good. I pulled it. Um, there you go. Oh, you need to see it. I just can't do all this. You need to see it. I don't know what this thing All right. Yes, sorry. Oh, the goals are way down here. Okay. okay. So, communications. Um, that's for orienting our story. Orienting ourselves. Um, we're going to try to work with this with 20 minutes. Um, but also, and another reminder, you're looking at goals, not specific processes or so. Um, so, with this being where we um, are with ourselves, I'm going to go backwards and start with... Uh, Remember Chen. We're on communications. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna pass for um to to hear some licensee comments first. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, board member Hall. Just reading through these. Um, I know transparency came up a lot, so I think that's important to highlight just overall. Um, we've discussed that under some of the other um, topics. Um, and as far as you know, we've talked about communication with um, licensees and how we're going to update the website soon and have access easier um, ways to get the information across of the changes and the rules is a big one. Um, there was another one. Oh, and you know, outreach has been a big one to me, but I don't, I don't know how the board can really, I mean, other than collaborating with the other groups. Um, but I think that's important with communication too, because we all want the best for the public and want the best for each other as professionals. So that's it. I mean, I think we'll just pause it, uh, facilitator voice, um, that collaborating and increasing the amount of collaboration could be a goal. I don't know if that's what you want to put up there, but just because it's not writing rules doesn't mean it's not within your sphere of influence. I think it helps. This is board member Hall. I think it also helps with the, um, the pipeline idea of getting more interest in pharmacy. Um, so to voice, um, how about a goal of increasing the frequency and contact points with community um, to um, use increase again <laughs> to, to increase the visibility of the board? Is something along those lines?
because what would also fall under there is the updates to the website, the working with the associations, the mentoring and all the other ideas that have also been thrown out as far as like building the pipeline. Yes, no. There's heads. Oh, yep. I, I'm excited. <coughs> We can change the second increase to something later. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. This is board member Chin a question while she's writing. How do we reach out or how do we as a board on a website even um, request you reach out to underserved communities and populations, um, whether they're inner city or rural? Is there a place for comment about what their needs are rather than us trying to assume what needs are. I mean, how how do how do we know where each of these pockets are and how do these pockets of peoples reach out to us about what their needs are? I don't have names. I'm, I'm, I'm a facilitator. <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, we yeah, we we we're, we're looking at DEI, but we we don't know. We're we're looking at it from our eyeballs, where we're not actually in these populations, and we're not asking the populations where they are and what their needs are. So we need to figure out how to have that kind of a communication. This is board member Beam, and one point that came up in the discussion panel I was in was, and it's old school about boots on the ground, essentially, and and part of the outreach that has dissolved is board members um, going out in to outreach events. Um, I know staff has increased the uptick since, since the pandemic has been, I won't say over, but released us back to freedom. Um, and, but, but board members aren't, and, and we used to, we used to be part of that outreach and, and put a face to the board um and kind of have that connection and hear people's whether it be licensees or public voices depending on the type of event so even though we're in a new realm of digital and make it quick and easy accessible when when there are outreach opportunities i think the board members that are are willing to or or, or who that's their community or close by just reestablishing that sense of physical, visual presence um, might help to mend a lot of what has dissolved in our communication pathway because of um, having to be so remote on everything. Are we okay with me changing this first increase to explore pathways to outreach? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we underestimate how having been through that, a lot of us like to forget it, right? Um, process of the pandemic, you know, we've changed in ways we don't remember until we realize, oh, we used to do this and now we never really got back to it. So there could be some things that we realized, okay, we need to Know, reconstitute or, or re-energize that that activity. It's just one example, right? We don't need to bring back everything, but things yeah. like that, I think, <laughs> for sure, are important. Hemmons, board member Hemmons, um, except I'm looking at the 
on this of establishing culture of accountability and transparency aligned with communication. Um, and then there's something third that's covered that I could see be inclusive. Mm -hmm. I think that goes with that. I'm still kind of stuck on these rules and communication around the rules. Um, Um, I think there needs, there should be some, a, some of a goal that speaks to not only the external way we communicate outside of the board, but um, what is the culture of accountability, transparency here amongst the board? Um, board members, board staff, because um, I think that filters to how we communicate externally. Um, so I'm rambling, but if you could put that into a sentence or something, <laughs> sounds good. <clears throat> Inclusiveness. What is? I mean, you're going to talk about that. Inclusive um, outreach. Being inclusive. I mean, when I know we have to have, as what member Berman says, we have to have um, what's your word that you? Uh, oh, um, at, we have to have. Can you remember? Yes. Well, you put me on the spot. I'm busy looking. <laughs> I'm busy reading my list here. <laughs> um, uh, consensus. Consensus. I know we have consensus, but it's not my word. It's the word of the board. Something <laughs> now. <laughs> of you when I think of that. Um, so yes, we need to have consensus, but I, I feel that there's still this need for us to be more inclusive in the way in which we communicate um, with each other. And I think that filters through into how we communicate with our external um, partners. So I want to put that, but well, there's that's two way thought. Mm -hmm. Two way communication. Well, I like culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Foster a culture of blah, 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 blah. Um, engage in activities that will foster the culture of accountability and transparency. Ooh. Right. Well, yeah, internally and externally. Okay. And maybe consider bringing in um, a facilitator to work with us around that. Really sense of not what the fix that. Um, facilitator voice, I would definitely agree with that. And I would definitely say it's not something that should start from the inside out when kind of like creating and shaking it all up and then figuring out where there's no cells. Um, it's going to need someone who is emotionally dispassionate about all of the dynamics that are going on in the room, but are, is really just focused and honing in on. Um, establishing the culture and kind of reorienting everyone to a similar role. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. Board member Vipperman. Well, I love that idea, but um, I'm always going to be having my own opinion. Um, okay, so I um, I wrote notes. Um, increase engagement um, in in the reach out in the outreach, um, and I think that's number one. Is okay, and then uh, more clarity in the rules, like 
and I love this part, can I, and I'm going to say it, like um, what um, what a tech can and cannot do. It's right there, right? I didn't write it. I swear. <laughs> I did not write it. More clarity in the rules, RE, what a tech can and cannot do. I would love to see that. Please write it down. Write it down. <laughs> I'm just trying to find where it is. It's right there on the yellow paper. Yellow. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. I did not write that. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so the goal is to. <laughs> um, the goal is to more clarity in rules, and I think we already went over that in a different one. Uh, I I get it, but somebody wrote that, and I'm like, I would like to re revisit that. Uh, okay, so accountability, um, consider um, approaches and communication, um, a software, a different software. And I don't know what this means. Avoid cold. What does that mean? See where it says they're on. What, oh. oh, okay. 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 So I think we, um, I know that we are considering, again, thank you, um, board uh, uh, consultant, pharmacist consultant Davis, uh, for informing us about the new. Um, the new things that are coming out on the website. I think that's huge. I also love the fact that you can listen to the board um, conversations on the website now. That is huge. But can we do more? Can we do more? And I think we should explore that, what that looks like. Um, and then consider, oh, okay. So how about this? It's not on there, but this is my own little thing. But how about this? How about we do, a, 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 just explore it, a TV ad. Yeah. How about a TV ad? How about, you know what? Let's not treat our pharmacists like poo. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a public service. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why we're not doing that. You know, the only way we're going to teach the public that you can't treat them like this is to, it's a learned, it's learned. And so, I, I, I mean, I think we should explore that. I think, I mean, they have things on there that are all kinds of ads. And I don't think that we should preclude ourselves from, from that. Um, so I think that's a good idea. And remember when that happens, the deep. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, uh, facilitator voice, it reminds me of those, um, I can't remember the exact language, but that like slogan that TriMet had for a long mm -hmm. time that essentially like behave yourself. Yes. yes. I think that is so imperative for our, our uh, profession because um, we need to teach the public that it's unacceptable to treat your pharmacist that way. Um, and so I, that was my idea. Okay. And then, uh, <laughs> that was right. yes, yeah, yeah. And don't forget the part about the technician. <laughs> okay, so I'm never gonna give up. You're on the record. I know, I'm never gonna give up. Yeah, you're right. The bumper sticker, farm pets are people too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, there's, I don't know. I just know that. That's my two cents. You can say star. Yes, I will star in that commercial. You can sing and dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the twist. Maybe this is this is board member Chin, the collaboration that we were looking for between schools and and um, associations and for um, funding. A campaign to not treat your pharmacists like poo. <laughs> and techs. Yes. And tech And interns and techs all stuff that. And my other my other idea, my other on my list was that the collaboration with the collaborate with other groups. There we go. He's got it. He's got it. Yep. Thank you. Definitely see that as a, um, a trust building activity with the associations. We need that for ourselves. This is board member Beeman. Um, I will, I agree with everything up there so far. Uh, I will comment on the avoid cold. Uh, there is a sense of a cold or um, unfriendly to the point of maybe being a bit unprofessional uh, dialogue and exchange between board staff and, and licensees in some cases, and we hear it more and more. And 
Um, so I think if we can try to find ways to, um, it's hard because we have to be direct. We have to be clear. We have to be concise, but, but, but when it gets to a point that it doesn't feel professional and it feels like there is a mood involved or a feeling involved, that can make it licensees afraid of us. And then we don't have an open pathway or an open dialogue. So avoid um, or try to reframe how our interactions, both with board members and with staff, though I think board members have less because we just refer it because we can't have certain conversations. Um, but just, and I think too, this is maybe where having more in-person outreach might help warm that feeling that has happened over the last few years. Um, but when we do have touch points with licensees and or with public, maybe um, regaining a warm professional, and I don't know the right words, I know this sounds really touchy feely oh my gosh i'm getting i'm getting an attitude from you but you may not you know and i speak directly and i, I get misinterpreted a lot myself so i i speak from experience and feedback of this but there is definitely ways to try to um not not convey any type of because it it, it eventually mm -hmm. comes off as sort of what you might interpret as a bias in certain yeah, and so I just, I think that trying to reassess how and where, and um, I don't have an answer, but that's just one of my my things is to try to warm those interactions, but. Yes, a thousand percent, yes. Um, so how do we feel about number two being engaged in activities that will foster a culture of professionalism, accountability, and transparency? Yeah. yeah. And they can be changed, but we're going to work with that. I also think that's part of communications. Um, close, closing the loop is something I've always kind of harkened back to with with anything. I think I've said it in other meetings and whatnot. But but making sure that communication is, if it if it goes out one way and, and a response is requested, then then making sure that 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 the loops are closed and making that. Um, I'm not saying it's not a priority, but just I, I'm throwing it in there because it's always a concern of let's let's make sure everybody's on the same page. Thank you. So I think there was part of what um, Member Beeman was saying that I would not want to lose because culture can can affect tone, it can affect attitude, and so. You know, I don't want to put warmth in there, but, you know, I think people could not recognize we can all fall into traps if we're busy, you know, stuff's happening, could be personal, could be professional. And, you know, we just sort of adopt a way of communicating that you don't even realize is coming off as, as you said, cold. And so, um, I mean, it's almost like this is going to really, really wacky, but like a culture of caring, you know, we're here to not just enforce, we're here to support and, and enable. And make sure that part of the culture of everybody associated with the Board of Pharmacy includes that dimension and not we're here to regulate or we're here to enforce. And I know you don't feel that way, but I do I do suspect that sometimes it's gotten to that edge, maybe because the agendas are so long and my God, we got to get all these rules written and, you know, it can affect all of it. So I, I'm wondering if there's a way to just add that to number two somehow, but like a, a reminder. So those yeah. Um, yeah. Warmth and care. Empathy. 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 Well, I think no. I think we mean that it was meant to be internal and external. Yes. Yeah. It is inside and outside. So maybe it's just make make, a, yeah. make sure we say that in there, internal and external. Here. Yeah. Somewhere just okay. no there. Well. So, keep, well. Executive yeah. Director Fox, it, it's, it, I'm always trying to do the lens of, you know, it sounds like something internal, something external, but you could put it there or you could say build trust among board staff, governing board and, and, and others. It's 
there has to be some trust building and part of that relationship building and that communications that needs to happen between the board and board staff. Make sure that we're all on the same page. Board Member Hemmons, I would actually say that it's board staff, board, and board board, and board community, board staff, community, external. Wait. That's why I said external, external, internal is all the dynamics that happens when we are together, and then how we relate to who are not here with us. Thank you, Director Fox. Um, we did 2.5 of this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's, I hear uh, Board Member Hemming, and, and um, the only thing I, I could say with that internal external piece is just make sure that we we elevate trust because it's and part of that we you have if you don't have trust you have nothing in this relationship and and to meet the goals that you need so that has to be the center of how we communicate if we talk about the culture that we want to develop you got to have trust to develop that culture uh, you want to be inclusive or do all your DEI do everything else like you got to have that trust um, moving forward sorry and this is board member Beeman again to kind of build on that and another one of my soapboxes I've gotten on for years is to hear more voices being involved and hear more comments from more avenues of people. But honestly, people are afraid to stand out. They are afraid to yes. apply. They are afraid to ask questions. And this is not with current dynamics. This is historically. Um, they don't want to be on the radar. They want to do what's required. And that's not how we can continue to find out where patient safety needs aren't being met. So that trust building is is a is a big piece in that. And I think that is the goal of I just I wish I had a better term for the the empathy is a great term, but it's uh just the tone and the added tone matters so much all the time. Yeah. Or member Patel, you know, everyone else they said really articulate really well so i don't want to add more but i a strong support of that trust and number second one uh, that we have to cultivate that foster culture that we trust among internally and then also external um so board member joyce so communication um transparency um so uh Communication with licensees and stakeholders, um, if we cannot give legal advice, what is the pathway for them to find the answers so they they don't get a violation? Um, we can't give legal, legal advice, but on the website, is there a clear pathway for them to find answers and how is that taken care of? Anyone, staff? The staff member from up, I think um, maybe partially to what you're asking is uh, procedurally when someone has an inquiry, how would we respond to that inquiry? Is that the question? Yeah, that's the question. Um, you know, someone's concerned that they might be non-compliant and they want answers. Um, Interpretation of who? Right. Um, and so, uh, what what guides them to the answer, or and how, how is that process? Is it a streamlined process, or is it um, how do they find answers to uh, an, an inquiry? Like, I I, I want to be compliant, but I'm having a hard time finding it in your rules. Um, you can't give me legal advice, but how sure. how are they guided to the right pathway? to find the answer so they don't get a violation. Uh, so staff member Ephraimoff, what I can share is if an inquiry it comes um, and is sent back to compliance, whether it's a phone call or an email, 
That compliance officer will converse and assess that question and see what applicable citations might be related to that, whether they're federal or they're within our rules. And they would send them, they would give them a link to the citations or a copy of what citations are. And that is, you know, depending, that sounds like how we would likely respond to a question like that. To keep into consideration too, obviously we can't know everything about everybody's situation. So being able to assess if they are in compliance or not is beyond the scope of what we could do. We could only answer within the information that is provided and to give what from what is provided seems like the most applicable citations at that time. If there's other documents that are on the board website, mission statements, um, policy statements, other things that are related, uh, we definitely do those resources. If they relate to other agencies, um, if that has to do with Oregon Health Authority or other documents that might be out there, we always try to coordinate and link them up with other resources too if they're available. Okay. Um, so that, that seems clear. Um, and also, um, I mentioned this yesterday or maybe earlier today about the um, cases breakdown. Um, I mean, I'd like to, you know, for the trans sake of transparency to see for the public to see what cases we are handling, what types of cases we are handling, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, and this goes down to communication and transparency, like how many cases are we seeing because people are not meeting their, the CE needs. Uh, um, how many cases, what percentage of cases are we seeing because you know there's diversion or so forth. I mean, I, I kind of like to see that. Um, I, I'm sure uh, if people were to look at in the website, they'd like kind of like to see what kind of cases uh, the Board of Pharmacy is looking at, um, per, you know, what percentage of, of what types of cases. Um, and another thing, um, as far as transparency, um, it, is there someplace on the website where we can see uh, school enrollment for school pharmacies, especially in Oregon, um, with OSU and Pacific? Can they go to the Oregon Board of Pharmacy website and say, hey, uh, University of Pacific is uh, at 60% enrollment, or uh, OSU, I mean, visually, the optics of that, being able to see that, you know, it kind of gives a sense like um, the pharmacy community needs to uh, engage more to get people involved in, in pharmacy, to get um, them interested in pharmacy. The enrollments are low, um, you know, it may be something that people can see and, and uh, you know, Maybe it'll be like a, a impetus for them to try to encourage more um, pathways for uh, students, younger folks to get interested in pharmacy. Just, because this is a desperate thing. I mean, it's, enrollments are low, staffing is low. Uh, you know, we need to do something about it. So maybe making that um, visible, uh, the enrollment numbers on the website would be a good thing. I don't know, it's just, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, yeah. Facilitator voice, yes, and that does fall under this. Gotcha. So that is a task to then reach. Yeah. I, community and visibility. I was being uh, specific, so. Yes. I remember, Prof, just one thing to share too, um, not to forget the board at the last board meeting had approved the disciplinary action report. So there is another source on the website for when there is um, action taken on a licensee, the individuals in the public and the other stakeholders could go to that to also help them triangulate to the board website where all notices and orders are um, posted there for any final action. So that's another vehicle for transparency and communication of cases. Okay. Sounded like though, facilitator mm -hmm. Pandy, the assuming you have better data about the cases, publishing some of that data online to provide a public view or you know practice a view of you know, what's going on in terms of the type of violations that are coming up might be a way of you know, being more transparent and also providing more feedback to the practice about you know where are people exactly. messing up that's my technical term mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> exactly thanks for summarizing that that's kind of my point yeah. Board Member Doyle, um, a thought that came to my mind with regard to number three, explore opportunities for PR to support board and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, at one point, uh, a couple decades ago, pharmacists were uh, identified as the number one 
trusted profession and that has deteriorated over time. Um, I, I don't know the, um, uh, the etiology of that information. Um, and, but we, but it certainly was used, uh, by the profession of Interest. So, uh, 